Welcome to Raw Online. Uh, today's topic is management of chronic pelvic pain. So, chronic pelvic pain, one third causes endometriosis, one third is because of chronic PID, and um, one third we don't know what is the cause. Okay, so we are still to find out the causes. So, we'll discuss about the causes. We are able to do something about it. So, first, most common or the treatable cause of uh, chronic pelvic pain is endometriosis. The goals in the management of endometriosis are to relieve pain, to halt the disease progression, to permit a satisfactory coitus and relieve the problems of dyspareunia, and to improve fertility where infertility is a concern. Prevention of endometriosis, we should realize that tubal patency tests should be avoided immediately after curettage or around the time of menses to prevent the dislodgement of the endometrium into the peritoneal cavity. And married women with the family history of endometriosis should be encouraged to have pregnancy at the earliest. Is there any role in expectant management? No. Treatment is justified to least to arrest the progression of endometriosis and also to eradicate the symptoms of endometriosis. So conservative management or delaying the treatment is not justified in endometriosis. Medical management aims to relieve pain and medical management can be done with the help of analgesics or with the help of an induction of complete amenorrhea. Analgesics, simple analgesics like paracetamol are given initially and in intractable cases more potent analgesics like tramadol and declofenac are given. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and acids are often used as first line therapy. Women may be offered an acids or other analgesics either alone or in combination with other treatments to reduce endometriosis associated pain. This is an uh, European Society for Human Reproduction and Endocrinology guideline and this is a weak recommendation because not much of uh, response or pain relief has been obtained with an acids and other analgesics. Hormone therapy, effect of hormone therapy on endometriosis is discussed by the mechanism of hormone therapy and how it induces atrophy. Pseudo pregnancy regimens induce decidualization of endometrium. So, progestogens can be used to decidualize the endometrium and reduce the progression of endometriotic implants. Now, pseudo menopausal regimens suppress ovarian function and pseudo menopausal regimens include administration of combined oral contraceptive pills that inhibit ovulation and administration of GnRH agonist that is called as medical hypophysectomy by anti-inflammatory drugs has also been used in endometriosis to minimize the secretion of inflammatory cytokine mediators. Estrogen progesterone combination COCs mechanism of action is by suppressing ovulation and to making the decidualization of the endometriotic implant. COCs can be used cyclically or continuously. Continuous use is better because extended cycle combined oral contraceptive is preferable for decreasing the frequency of painful menses. Roots of forcibles can be root can be oral, vaginal or transdermal administration of combined or contraceptive pills can be done and it can be used for long term. Initially it is given for 6 months. And vaginal ring is available in the form of 15 microgram of ethanol estradiol and 120 milligrams of etonogestrel. Transdermal patches of 20 micrograms of ethanol estradiol and 150 micrograms of norregestronin has also been available. Now, osipils, we see that we are having a levonorgestrel and ethanol estradiol tablets, overall L, which can be used in cyclical or continuous use. Continuous use is better. And then we also have overall G which contains norgestrel and ethanol estradiol tablets. Progestogens available in the market include the registron pill which is available as a 5 mg tablet and norethindron acetate tablets 5 mg daily. It can go up to 20 mg daily. It has been used as a continuous use for pain relief in uh, endometriosis. We can also use uh, desogestrel containing a pill like desogestrel 0.15 milligram and ethanol estradiol 20 microgram which is available as Femilon which is a low dose estradiol containing pill. We can also use a progesterone tablet like didrogesterone tablet which is a progesterone analog 10 milligram in 3 doses 
for continuously for three to six months. We, fourth generation progesterone is Dynogest and uh, it is used in the dose of 2 mg per day. It suppresses the endometrial implant but does not suppress ovulation at these doses and uh, does not suppress ovarian steroidogenesis completely at these doses. So, it does not produce much hypoestrogenic side effects. Medroxyprogesterone acetate tablets have also been used and um, medroxyprogesterone uh, acetate injections have also been used and um, norethisterone tablet has also been used 10 to 25 milligram per day and medroxyprogesterone acetate tablets also 10 milligrams uh, three times a day for three to six months have also been used for endometriosis related pain. Coming to injectables, Dipoprovera acetate 150 milligram intramuscular injection every three months and this is associated with some metabolic side effects. So, they have come up with a subcutaneous injection in the form of depot metroxyprogesterone 104 milligram subcutaneous injection Sinopress. It is effective in reducing pain of endometriosis. It has got less impact on bone mineral density as compared to GnRH analogs and has a better metabolic profile as compared to DMPA intramuscular injection.